Welcome back to this script case training. During this part, we will be continuing from where we had left off in part one. And the topic of this training was image management within script case. So during this second part, we will continue from where we had left off and continue creating some further applications and seeing how we can add and manage images within the various applications that we have available. So previously, we had also presented some resources which, which we are using during this training. So let me go over those quickly again. So first of all, we have here Pixabay, which we are using for the background images, which we had downloaded. Here you will find various free images, which you can also use within your own project. We're also using Icon Finder. Icon Finder is ideal for finding icons which you require within your application. Again, if you select here free, you will find all of the free icons which you can use within your own project. We're also using Font Awesome. Font Awesome is included with script case, so you don't have any need to add the CSS or the header code within your project. You can leave it as it is, copy the I class that you have here, make your adjustments, uh, change how you want the image displayed. Of course, if you have the professional license, then you can go ahead and do that. Alternatively, you just use the free access, copy your code, paste it in your application as we had seen previously. The next resource we are using is here the... The next resource we are using is here Bootstrap. So we had applied Bootstrap within this blank application and we are for that displaying this background image. We'll continue to use Bootstrap within this training video and see how we can apply further images and use Bootstrap within our applications further. Now, within script case, we have various, fun various ways of storing our images. So we have first of all here, we have first of all here the image manager which is where we now have some images stored. So accessing here the project tab, we have here the BG3 available, and we could add further images to this. We then also have general images, which we have uploaded and added here, which we will also use during this video. The other storage place where we added images was within our external library. So tools and external libraries, we can see down the bottom here, we attached a library to our project. We called it images. And within that we have BG1, BG2 and BG3, which has three background images I had added. Okay, so returning back to where we were, we had created here the blank application. And within the blank application, we had added our basic HTML layout and included Bootstrap and all of the JavaScript code required for Bootstrap to run beautifully. Okay, so here we have also added two images. One, we are using the library, and the alternative, we are using the external library. So correct me there. The first one, we are using the library of the image manager, okay, within the script case. The second one here, we're actually using the project folder within the external library, which we had also created previously. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and close the blank application, and then what I'm gonna do is actually copy it. Okay, so this time I will call it blank and cards, and select okay. Now let's go ahead and open that. And what I'm gonna do now is actually retain the layout that we have here, and just keep the bootstrap and JavaScript code here. Now, if I go into Bootstrap and then here within the documentation, we can access the components that are available within Bootstrap. And here I will go ahead and select card. Okay, so cards allow us to add these containers with some text and some images with a button. There are various formats here available, which we can then basically just copy this piece of code, paste it into our blank application, and it will work right away. So if I scroll down here, and what I'm going to look for is one of these extra cards where we have a few of them grouped together. So I take here the card groups look, and then what I'll do is I'll just copy this piece of code here, copy that, return back into the script case, my blank application, paste it in here into the page, and then we can go ahead and run it. 
and see what that looks like by default. Okay, so we have here our card. We have here some basic information, which of course we can then add and complete. And what we want to concentrate on is the image. So we have here the image within each card, and we want to change the source. So the source would basically be the path to the file that we want to actually add. So if I'm just going to go ahead and remind you within the images manager and the script case help manual, you will find here the paths required for the images which are stored here within the image manager. So let's go ahead and open that here within the layout and images manager. We have here project and we have here background images and icons or general images, depending on where we store it. And then within here, the help documentation, we can see here the correct format of the image that it needs to be. So for instance, we have our file here in the project tab and then in the background images. And then here we have it here, group GRP underscore underscore, so it's two underscores, NM in capital letters, underscore underscore, and then in this case it would be BG and then NM again. So let's go ahead and access our blank application. So I'll come here and paste first of all the path. And we see here, first of all, that we have here image indicated. So it needs to be BG. And then we also want to change the image file that we have there located. So I have there available BG3. So if I go ahead and copy that and paste that into each source, we will then use the image that is available within our image manager. And we see here our image is not there. So let's go back and double check that. And we have a PNG where our image is, is in fact a JPEG. So let's go ahead and change that to JPG. And then we can paste that to each one. And then the final one, JPEG, run that again. And now we should have our images displayed within our cards. Okay, it's so very important to note here that in some cases it's very easy to actually get this path incorrectly. So we have our lib folder where we store all of the external libraries as well as the libraries of script case. So when you, we add images, they are stored within the underscore lib folder and then image. Okay, but then we also have to navigate one folder down. So once we do that, then we can access the lib folder, the image folder, and then we need to get the correct indication ready for our file. So when we upload images to script case, this indicator will be automatically added to the name of the file that we have. So if I can access here the external libraries, for instance, we'll see that the original file names are BG1, BG2, and BG3, and then when I uploaded them here to the images manager, they were added by script case, this specific code indicating the location of the file within script case. Okay, so an alternative to this, let me go ahead and save this and access my home. Uh, I will go ahead and close the blank cards. We can then copy the blank cards and then let's call it this time cards ext for the external library. And I'm just going to copy the piece of code here to make it a little easier. And instead of using the full source, like here the path that we have, we can use the files located within our external library. So here I'm just going to add some PHP code. Then we're going to echo the SCURL library, PRJ being the project. So let's go ahead and confirm that again. External library, project, so PRJ. And then here we have the images folder and then the file names we had already seen a few times. So we have here the PRJ for project, images for the folder that it's called, and then the project P, PG1 for the file. So let's go ahead and paste that also within these others here. Remove these dots here and then here. So we already start using the images that we have within the external library instead of just the one I added to the image manager. And then we can run our application again. 
and this time we are using the images located within the external library within our blank application. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that again, but this time we will create an, another blank application. So I will this time again copy the blank image. So if I copy this one, and then I'll call it blank, and then we can call it car for carousel, just short. And then if I open this one again, we have our initial layout here. We can then also leave the JavaScript and CSS for Bootstrap as we will go ahead and access Bootstrap again. And this time we have here the carousel. And then we can replicate this, or one of these, into our application. So we have here the carousel with controls. So let's go ahead and cut controls and indicate. Let's select the indicators. So let's go with the indicators, copy that. I can paste that then here, here into my blank application. And again, I can just replicate the code that we had used previously. And here, BG1, BG2, and BG3. So let me adjust this. BG2 and BG3. Run the carousel. And we now have a fully functional carousel within our blank application. Of course, as previously, we can rep replicate this, use the library or script case library files instead of using the external library. The choice is, of course, yours depending on your project and how and where you want to store your images. So let's go ahead and do that anyway. So I'll go ahead and close this one. I will copy this and again call it blank car. And this time, Manager. Okay, and now this time instead of using the images that we have there now as echoed with PHP using the external library, let's replace that then here with again the images that we are using within the script case image manager. So here we're replacing them. And again, remember here, image, the path of our file is actually BG. So we want to change that. So BG instead of image, BG and BG again. And of course the image file is a JPEG. And the name of the file is just BG3. And if I run that again, we now have a carousel with the only image that I have there at the moment within the script case image manager and fully functioning and looking really, really good. Okay, so to tie everything together, let's go ahead and close the blank application. I'm gonna create one more application before we create a menu to link everything together. So let's go ahead and create the grid application and again, let's go ahead and select the clients table, which we had used in the first video. So this is a, um, so I am using here the samples table, but this table I'd actually created and added myself. So it's just a few simple fields, client ID, first name, last name, date of birth, address, photo, telephone number, Skype uh, from clients. So I'll go ahead and click create. And now here we have our fields. So if I go edit our fields, I'll hide the client ID straight away. The telephone number and Skype is already hidden. I'll move the photo over here to the left and let's go ahead and run the application. Okay, so we can see our client list. Now what we wanna do first of all is change the, the dimensions of the image that we have displayed here. And we wanna add two fields in here so that we can add some edit, edit buttons and maybe a delete button, and also add an icon up here into the header. So let's go ahead and do that. So here within the photo field, we have here the options to change and add a border to our images. So I'll go ahead and do that. I'll add a two pixel border. I will reduce the height and width of the image to 80 pixels. And let's go ahead and check that out and see the difference now. 
Okay, so we can already see that this is a lot tidier. We'll fit a lot more clients in here and actually can see a bit more what's going on. So let's adjust the header first of all. So within the layout, header and footer, we can remove here the date. There's really no need for that. And here for the clients, we actually had used a coffee cup before, which is this one here. So let's go ahead and do that again. Let's copy the code. And we can just paste that in here into our header and run that. And we will see that we now have an FA icon, a font awesome icon here. And let's go ahead and actually increase the size of that. So FA times two. Okay, so we can see here we have our coffee cup now within the clients. We could, of course, change this a little bit, report off clients. We can increase the font awesome icon if we wanted to. So now if I get rid of here the language, just leave clients. And then, so we have actually space here, an FA times two, I believe that's correct. Let's go ahead and test that. Run our application and we have now no increase in size. So let's go ahead and check font awesome. And we have here the docs. So within the docs, we can actually see how we can correctly change the size of our icon. Now here with the right hand side, we have here styling options. So sizing icons. And there we go, FA-SMLG. So we can actually apply this so it's two times and not times two. So there I made a mistake. So let me correct that two times. And then we can run our application again. And we'll see the coffee cup icon is now much larger and fits within our header a little nicer. Okay, so next thing we wanna do then is add our next two tables. Our next two fields here. So returning here, let's add a new field, so two new fields, and we'll call this one edit, and let's call this one delete. Okay. Now we want to change both of these fields to label. Okay, so we have our two fields now. We have our edit and delete fields. And what we want to do is then access our events and then on record. So here we will target first of all the edit field. And then we will also target the delete field we had created. And then here we can then paste or copy our image code in here. So if I come here and then I'm going to paste this our path in here again. In fact, we need the entire image code. So let me copy the whole line. And then we're going to paste the entire image in here. And again for the next one. And now what we want to do is check our images within the image manager. Because I do not remember the full name of them. So here project. We had here then general images. And we have here edit one, edit two, and delete PNG. So these are all PNGs. So let's go ahead and access the grid again. So for delete, we have here delete. PNG. Now we also then need to check our path where it's images and we are in general images. So let's go ahead and run that and see if we are actually getting that first image there. And we have an error in our code. Okay, so and of course I see here we actually have all these tags here, so we need to change all of these. Go ahead and do that. And then that way we don't receive the PHP error no more because we're canceling out. We can actually adjust the height and width while we're at it. Okay. There we go. And that was all, of course, also why the, the code had actually changed color here. So let's go ahead and change this to 24 pixels. 24 pixels and the height is also 24. We can run that again. And now within our grid application, we already have our delete icon, which is, well, our edit icon is displayed, but our delete icon is not. So here we also have a mistake. And we see here we also have an extra mistake here within our code, which is exactly there. So let's get rid of that. Okay, so we need to check, confirm our path. So delete PNG. Confirm that again, delete PNG, which is there. And then the script case also. So 
here. Let's change this one to edit underscore one and the delete. And when we now run our application, our images are now displayed within the application. So we have here our edit icon and we have a delete icon. So we can actually click these and create links to edit this item or delete the item as we please. Uh, one other thing we can actually do is adjust the edit here. So say for instance, we can add an if statement in here and change the icon display depending on the if statement. So if I just use, for instance, here, a code snippet I have here, I could say if or else, and then adjust the if statement here accordingly. So if my variable equals X, then we can display, for instance, this edit icon, or we can display the next edit icon. So I need to copy here the full line, paste that in there. And then for instance, we can have here the edit two, depending on a specific outcome. So that is of course an option that we can use here. In that case, we would want to remove this original one. And then we can run our application. And then depending on a variable that we have defined somewhere within our application, we can change the view of this edit icon so that, for instance, we know if the um, visually if the item has been edited or if it requires editing or however you please, depending on your project needs. Okay, so next up, we want to go ahead and create a menu and see how we can add images within the menu application. So let's go ahead and access new applications, create a menu. I'll just go ahead and select create. And now within the menu item, if I add a few items here, so the first one would then be the login that we had created. We then also have uh, the form, uh, client form that we had created. We also have the client list. We have the carousel. We have also the cards. And of course, we can add as many of our applications as we need. We can change the layout or the theme of our menu here. So I'm just scrolling down here and let's just pick one of these other ones, uh, maybe a little nicer than this one. I've got so many here. So let's just go with this one, dark brown. And now within here, we can also add images within our menu. So here we have the option first of all to add icons within the menu, which then we can select using the script case manager. So if I add that, we'll see that the icon here is added. So now this would be the typical way of doing that. So if I just go ahead and run through this, we'll just pick some random icons that we have here, place them into each element, and then we'll, we'll actually, after this, go ahead and use font or some icons instead, as I think it's actually a little nicer. So here, icons for the client form. So like I said, just random icons. Nothing spectacular. And then we have images in here. Let's add this add X load like that. Okay, so if I run the application again, we'll now see that we have our menu as well as then the icons added. Now in general, like menu is really not so nice. So I have one here. That one's not sexy, that's not very nice at all. Okay, and the crystal lines are quite good. So menu black. There we go. So next thing that we want to do actually here is within the settings, before I continue there, is change the default application. And here we're just going to go ahead and select the blank application that I had created earlier. So that was the blank image. So if I import that and then run that. We'll now see the menu change as well as then the background image, which we had there previously. Okay, so now within the menu items, we then want to go ahead and link the applications that we have here. So we have then the control login. We then have the clients form. So we have here the form clients. We have then also the grid application, the grid clients. We have also the carousel. the carousel, which was then the card, and then the cards. 
and that also. And there we have here the cards. Okay, so now if I run that, we now have each of our applications added in here with our login options. Of course, here we would have to make a big change. We have the image in the background, which is then causing issues with our form here. So that is something we would have to change within the form application and force it to be the size. We then also have the client form, the client list, the carousel we had created, and also the cards. Okay, so returning back here, the alternative to actually adding icons here would be using font or some icons, as I said. But before we do that, let's have a look here. First of all, we have here the tabs available within the application. And for those, we can also add icons within each tab. So again here, I'll go ahead and select random icons. We have here for the active tab, and then also the inactive tab. So if I go ahead and select these two, and run the menu again, we'll now see if I go to login, for instance, we have now the icon that displayed, I'll open the contacts, and the icon will change. So we can apply this to each of the tabs that we have available within our menu, and that way we, have, we are showing a different image for the application. Okay, so before we continue, I'm going to close the menu application, return back to the home, and we're going to go ahead and copy this menu. And I'll call this menu underscore FA. Go OK. Okay, and now this time we're going to use some font or some icons within our menu instead of using these images. So if I go ahead and remove all of these, really don't like them very much. So let's go. And then we can access here within font or some icons, for instance, we can search for the icons that we want to use. So I'm just going to go ahead and pick again a random one. So here we have, say, the address book. And again, here I can just copy the font or some code and I can apply that here within the text. And as we see, that is now applied within our menu here. So I can apply that then to each one. Of course, within your own project, you would add custom icon depending on the menu item that you have there. And then if I go ahead and run that, we now have font awesome icons within our menu application. Always nice and clean to be displayed like so. Okay, so one thing that we wanna do before we finish up is access the layout here. And then within the layout, we have our menu structure. So to use our menu structure, we actually need a header and footer. So let me access, enable first of all the header, and then we access the menu structure, and we're gonna make changes to both. So here, first of all, the header we want to add, we run that now, and then we can decide what we're gonna do there. So we have the header here, so we can apply, for instance, within the header, we can apply again a font or some icon in here, run that. And now we have, of course, we need to enable the header first. So the title, run it again. And then we have the icon. Ah. Okay, so the next thing we want to do then is actually apply uh, some adjustments to this menu. So let me turn here back to the script case. We will then go back to layout and then access the menu structure. And within the menu structure, we can actually drag elements into the menu and let's go ahead and add one to either side here. So we have one on the left and one on the right. We can make adjustments to the width and the size of this menu item as we please. And then we can actually click the edit icon that's within the container, select a type of image. And then now from here, we can add images which are located within our script case manager. Now here we have the project. In the general images, we have some icons here already. So here I will add the bell notice, add the selected, and then we can go ahead and save the changes. With the left-hand side, we can then also do the same thing, select the type, select your image, and this time we can select here, for instance, the script case image, add the selected, save the changes again, and let's go ahead and run it. Okay, so we can see now we have a script case image on the left-hand side, we have a bell icon, we may want to make some further adjustments here so that we see that this is actually a little wide here and it's a little wide over on this left hand side as well. So we can go ahead and just 
drag this over and make these elements a little smaller so that these items fit a little bit better. So there we go, down to 3 to 4%. And clicking the edit again, we can actually make some changes here to the font. If, if we have text in here, we can add a background color if we wanted to. So let me go ahead and add black, for instance. And then we can change the alignment also. So here we're actually good at left. We don't need the right. So just save that one. But now this one, we do want to change the alignment to the right-hand side. Save the changes. Let's run that again and see now where we're at. Okay, so we now see that we have a little background behind our script case image. We also have our menu. So we have a login, the client form, the client list, the carousel and the cards that we had created, as well as the notification icon over on the right hand side. So before we finish up, I actually really want to change this menu, this login form that we had created previously so that it looks a little nicer within this application. So now I'm going to go ahead and access the control application or the control login we had created previously. I will remove the left, I will leave the top. The pixels, let's change that to 20% and then we can generate that source. And then we can go ahead and run our menu application again. And now the login is now nicely placed within the front page. So before we finish up here, I should also indicate that we don't really need to add the font or some icon here into the title. It is an option, we can do that. Another option is, however, to use the display option on the right-hand side here. Instead of selecting text and image, we can select text and icon font awesome. So selecting this, we will also have the icon option here where we can select the icon that we want to use within Scriptcase. So here, let me hit, select the angry face. And for the client logon, for the client's form site, let's do the same. Select the font awesome icon, I will leave the cog. And then for the client list, we'll select the font awesome icon as well. Remove the manual icon we added. Here we add the apple apple. For the carousel, we'll do the same. And here we have font awesome icon. And we can select here the field again. And this time, let's select here the A for Avengers or even Angular. And then here on Cards, we can remove the font awesome again, add it manually here within the display option. Scroll down here within the options and select the icon that you want displayed. So again, just random icons added, run our application again. And then we can see here that we have our font awesome icons added to our menu and notice how they are also included directly within each of the tabs that we open. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this training and seen how you can manage and use images within Scriptcase within the various applications that are available. Don't forget there are many resources available and you can always include external libraries within Scriptcase which will further extend the usability and functionality of your entire platform.